so let us proceed but before we proceed to the next question i just like want to remind you to ensure that you like share and subscribe to the channel so using examples explain the difference between bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs so bacteriostatic from the word static being static is uh, to inhibit so bacteriostatic drugs inhibit the growth and replication of microorganisms and their significance is to give the body the body's immune system a chance to destroy a given microorganism so bacteriostatic drugs inhibit the growth and replication of a, a bacteria or microorganisms giving the body's immune system a chance to destroy and remove the pathogens Bactericidal. Cidal means to kill. So bactericidal drugs outrightly kills microorganisms. So what is the what is an example of a, a bacteriostatic drug? So you need to know examples of bacteriostatic drugs and bactericidal drugs. So examples of bacteriostatic drugs are such as um, chloramphenicol, nitrofurantoin, and clindamycin. While um, bactericidal are like quinolones, um, vancomycin, penicillins, and so forth. So you need to know these drugs of head. You need to understand them. So examples of bacteriostatic drugs are chloramphenicol, nitrofurantoin, clindamycin, tetracycline, erythromycin, trimethoprim, lincomycin. Then examples of bactericidal drugs include aminoglycosides, quinolones, cycloserine, vancomycin, carbapenems, penicillins, and uh, cephalosporins. So you need to know the difference between bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs. So these ones are covered in biochemistry and also in pharmacology. So what is meant by the term chemotherapeutic spectrum of an antibiotic? So chemotherapeutic spectrum of an antibiotic. First of all, we say that uh, a chemotherapy, chemotherapy refers to the use of chemicals to treat diseases. So chemotherapeutic spectrum refers to the range within which a certain drug works on a given group of microorganisms so it refers to the number of microorganisms that are affected by a certain drug so a drug with a wider chemotherapeutic spectrum affects a larger number of microorganisms on the other hand a drug with a smaller chemotherapeutic spectrum affects a limited number of microorganisms so explain each of the following terms as used in biochemistry so the first term is a uh, azwita ion. So azwita ion is a doubly charged molecule. So azwita ion, when you, we, we are referring to amino acid, it refers to a doubly charged amino acid. So azwita ion normally exists at a, at a neutral pH, where the amino group exists in associated form, while the carboxyl group exists in a dissociated form so you can get that one from my notes i've gone to that one is on uh, properties of amino acids or amino acids mildly explained i think i have explained that one very well then we go to question number seven describe pyruvate decarboxylation pyruvate decarboxylation so you want to describe pyruvate decarboxylation so pyruvate decarboxylation is carried out by a tri-enzyme found in the matrix of the mitochondrion known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex some people normally denote it by pdhc so as i said let us draw pyruvate dehydrogenase complex this is a tri-enzyme I want to draw it well. Let me start from here. I 
how am I going to draw it? Sorry. I want to draw pi over the hydrogenase complex well. So I can begin from here. So pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a tri-enzyme that is found in the inner matrix of the mitochondrion. So it is made up of three different enzymes. The first one is denoted as E1 and it bears the parent name of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. The second one is denoted as E2 and it is called it is called dihydrolipoid transacetylase. Transacetylase. Then the third one is denoted as E3 and it is called dihydrolipoid dehydrogenase. dehydrogenase let me write it like that so um, the role of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is to carry out decarboxylation of pyruvate so pyruvate is a three carbon component pyruvate is a keto acid and it is a three carbon component so this tri-enzyme has got various um, coenzymes that are attached to it. So the first one that is attached at E1 is known as TPP. TPP means thiamine pyrophosphate. Then attached to E2 is a uh, lipoic acid. Also known as lipoate. Then uh, around E2, but it's not, it's not bound on E2, but it's free, is coenzyme A. Then attached to E3 is uh, FAD. And the one that moves around E3 is uh, NAD. So... TPP, TPP means thiamine pyrophosphate. It has got um, it has got a five-membered ring. So this five-membered ring is what we call a, a prosthetic group that binds pyruvate. So when it binds pyruvate, it kicks off carbon dioxide from pyruvate. And the remaining component of pyruvate remains attached on it. So that's what we call hydroxyethyl TPP. Hydroxyethyl TPP. I can write it like that. That means a methyl group. Huh? So to form hydroxyethyl TPP. So hydroxyethyl TPP swings to E2 where it interacts with lipoic acid and it regenerates our thiamine pyrophosphate back to its original state. So during the interaction of uh, hydroxyethyl TPP with, uh, with lipoic acid, one of the sulfur atoms of the lipoic acid gets attached to the acetyl group of uh, the remaining residue, while the other one gets reduced. So let me draw the the resulting molecule. So one of the sulfur atoms gets attached to sulfur uh, to hydrogen atom. That means it gets reduced, while the other component remains attached to the other sulfur atom. So let's stop there for a while and discuss about lipoic acid. So lipoic acid has got um, various parts. It has a five-membered ring also. 
it has a disulfide bond and it also has lysine structure so the most important part of lipoic acid is lies here in the disulfide bond so the disulfide bond helps in uh, the transfer of the acetyl group from this compound onto coenzyme A to form acetyl group and also during uh, bond breaking that is uh, when the disulfide bonds are broken they yield energy that carries out forward reaction so this compound that is formed this intermediate compound that is formed this intermediate compound that is formed transfers the acetyl group onto coenzyme A transfers the acetyl group onto coenzyme A to form acetyl CoA to form acetyl CoA which is a two carbon component so acetyl CoA is what uh, flows off and enters the TCA cycle so our remaining component of a lipoic, lipoic group or lipoate is completely reduced so it looks like this is completely reduced so this reduced version donates its electrons to FAD so FAD is reduced into FADH so FAD accepts the two electrons from um, the reduced version of lipo H so in the process of donating the electrons our um, lipo H group gets oxidized back into its original form so FAD is now reduced but it's adjacent to our NAD which is moving around uh, around our enzyme so FAD donates its electrons to NAD to form NADH that's of course our, our proton but in the process our FAD is regenerated back to its original form and that is what we call pyruvate decarboxylation so let's revisit our diagram so pyruvate interacts with tpp tpp has got a prosthetic group that's a five-membered ring that kicks off binds pyruvate and kicks off carbon dioxide to form hydroxyethyl tpp so the hydroxyethyl tpp swings to e2 where it interacts uh, with lipoic acid at e2 so during the interaction the acetyl group gets to attach to our lipoic acid to form acetyl lipoamide so this is called acetyl lipoamide let me label them perhaps my pronunciation is a problem so let me label this diagram so this is a this is lipoid this is a acetyl lipoamide acetyl lipoamide So this is our reduced lipoamide. So I've said that TPP swings to E2, it interacts with lipo H to form acetyl lipoamide. So acetyl lipoamide is the one that transfers the acetyl group onto coenzyme A to form coenzyme A to, to form acetyl CoA, which is a two carbon component that flows into the TCA cycle. Then um, from the interaction, our lipoic acid group is completely reduced, so it donates its electrons to FAD to form FADH2. FADH2 donates its, pro its electrons to NAD to form NADH and it regenerates back to FAD. So that is essentially what we call pyruvate decarboxylation. So this question can also be framed as um, describe pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. That is the same thing. So we go to the next uh, part. Give reasons. Give reasons why PDHC exists as a tri-enzyme. So reasons. Why pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme exists as a tri-enzyme? Why does it exist in three form? So this keeps the coenzymes together to allow for easy regeneration. 
Another reason is that it prevents the reactive or intermediate the reactive intermediates from being lost. That's what we call transient intermediates. Then number two is that it maintains high local concentration of the reactants. Then all reactants in the compound can easily be controlled as one. So we go to the next question. So what is drug resistance? So drug resistance refers to the ability of uh, microorganisms to the standard drug that was uh, toxic to it, that was previously toxic to it. So state four basic mechanisms by which microorganisms become resistant to drugs. Number one is by production of drug inactivating enzymes. So an example of such enzymes is uh, beta-lactamase. So beta-lactamase interacts with penicillin and it, it cleaves a prone bond. Maybe if I can, um, I can illustrate to you the basic structure of penicillin. So, So if I may describe the basic structure of penicillin. So this is, um, I want to use a different ink. This is what we call beta lactam ring. This is beta lactam ring. And um, this is a diazolidine ring. I, I normally point the arrows in the opposite, that's what I'm used to, so bear with me. So this is the diazolidine ring. So when you look at the basic structure of penicillin, it has got a nitrogen atom, a sulfur atom, an oxygen, an O double bond, and then the side chain. So the side chain is the one that varies from one type of penicillin to another. So... Um, what happens is um, beta-lactamase beta -lactamase enzyme cleaves a prone bond. It cleaves a bond that, um, that bonds, the, the bond that exists between this, the nitrogen atom and the oxygen atom. So uh, this is what I call prone bond. And also the sulfide bond in the uh, aminoglycosides. So they normally cleave this bond, but you know you need to know that during uh, interaction, the drug is supposed to recognize the basic structure. It's a, the basic structure of the drug is supposed to be recognized before it becomes functional. So beta lactamases cleave the prone bond of penicillin. So um, we go to another part called um, another part of the answer called alteration of porines. So some of these microorganisms, they normally alterate the porines. They may change the shape of the porines so that uh, they, they inhibit the entry of the drug. They minimize the entry of the drug by changing the shape of that porine. Or essentially, through reducing the size of the pore, we might reduce the concentration of the drugs. Yet the efficiency of a drug such as penicillin and aminoglycosides depend on the concentration in the on that side of uh, action then change in the receptor structure so some microorganisms normally mutate in the structure so and this makes um the drug not to recognize that structure what we call a drug receptor interaction then another one is called alteration of metabolic pathways so microorganisms may acquire ability to use a uh, performed folic acid bypassing inhibitory actions of uh, sulfonamides. So once again, number one, production of drug inactivating enzymes. And I have given you an example of beta-lactamases. So beta-lactamases cleave the susceptible bonds, especially in penicillins. Then we have uh, alteration of porines. They change the size or shape of porines such that uh, 
drugs such as penicillins and aminoglycosides do not penetrate or reach the desired concentration. Then we have change in receptor structure. So antibiotics such as penicillins and erythromycins bind to specific receptors. So some microorganisms mutate in their structure, reducing the drug's affinity to bond to the receptors. Then we have an alteration of metabolic pathways. Microorganisms may acquire ability to use performed folic acid by passing inhibitory actions of sulfonamides. So in the next lesson, we are, in the next part, we are going to question number nine. So stay tuned. I would like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe. Ensure you have subscribed to the channel.